Hello and welcome to the Lead Gen HQ podcast. I'm your host, Alex. And today we're going to be discussing the topic that is set to redefine the digital marketing world. The end of third party cookies is here in 2024. It was already delayed last year, primarily by Google, right? But it's here. And Chrome's recent announcement to join Firefox Safari in this move that marks a significant shift in web privacy is is really going to change the way we can all track things in marketing lead generation and uh just websites e-commerce pretty much the way we have all been accustomed to just turning over our information ip addresses types of devices like all the information that companies collect from us without our permission is changing so that's what i want to do today is just explore what that means for us in the business and in the marketing world but before i do that i i wanted to really kind of go back to a few episodes that we we covered here in january uh, mainly we focused on lead nurturing and i had a few questions sent to me about that why why i have focused on lead nurturing so much well really it comes from you the listener we do survey not large groups but sometimes anywhere between 15 to as many as 75 respondents that come from our newsletter which if you are not a a part of our newsletter uh check it out in the show notes and and uh definitely subscribe because we're we're there you know sharing really good information that we're gathering on a weekly basis but why why we choose each topic for the podcast here is is basically uh uh based on your feedback um you know like in december we covered like trade shows website audits uh google versus facebook in terms of doing lead ads and then we kind of went right into lead nurturing this was a topic that we we were asked about quite a bit so we went and created three episodes about that the art of lead nurturing and uh, one of the episodes back in at the beginning of this month was about the the lead gen world changing with what the fcc what the fcc's new regulation about post robocall and and whatnot so you know i in terms of lead generation and what i try to cover on this show is it spans right the the website e-commerce technology world then it starts to go into digital marketing i like to talk about the content implications of seo uh implications of social media obviously lead generation itself things like landing pages how to optimize for conversion um how to do paid ads on different platforms a b testing I mean, if you go back to a lot of our episodes, especially the solo episodes, you're going to hear a lot of that. Now, one thing that we did last year that we were asked about, um, and we're going to do more of this year, is the interviews. I love to interview uh, different thought leaders in the industry, but the, the fact is that you know, marketers, uh, CEOs, uh, lead gen experts. I mean, they're busy, right? And and um, it's really hard to put together a schedule that works for everyone. Uh, because again, the podcast here, Lee Gen HQ, we're not we're not sponsoring it by anybody. We're not taking in ad dollars. This is just a what what I would call a true passion project for what we do at Predict and all the Lee Gen um, experiences that I've had over the last fifteen years. So, that being said, let's go right into the uh, the episode. So the first thing is understanding the change. You know what's What's happening next exactly, right? So in a nutshell, Chrome, which is owned by Google, plans to start disabling third-party cookies for 1% of users from Q1 2024 with a gradual increase to 100% by Q3, right? So it's going to start to impact different people. Um, they, they don't really say how they chose the top 1%. They say it's uh, random, randomized between locations, uh, devices, connectivity, and all of that, right? Also the, the age of devices. Now, this is going to follow the trend set by Firefox and Safari, reflecting a broader move towards enhanced web privacy. Again, privacy, not security. We've talked about this here in the past. You know, these large tech companies always talk about, oh, we have your, your um, security at top of mind. And I do believe that security, absolutely keeping you secure with passwords, uh, two-step two uh, authentication, things like that, two-factor. But 
privacy is very different than security and, and privacy, let's be honest, all the tech companies have absolutely done a horrendous job. And I say that openly because we know that that's the case. And in some cases, even in the lead gen world and the affiliate marketing world, at the end of the day, everyone's trying to sell something. And so, you know, compliance, uh, uh about people's privacy has really been at the like back, back, back of the room. Nobody cares about it. And it's taken a what, like 20 years for regulators in Congress, more than 20 years actually, to come around to the fact, say like, hey, it's time we crack down. And if these companies don't do it, then we're coming from them, right? So think of section 230, which I, I have also covered in the past and affects social media and tech companies. Now, the impact on web developers and marketers, in my opinion, is that it, it's, it does have major implications um, for us in this world. It, it means rethinking how we track user behavior, how do we gather analytics and how we personalize experiences. So we'll have to be innovative in the new and in, in find new ways to understand our audience without infringing on their privacy. Interestingly enough, if you look at some of Google's products, right? GA4, Google Analytics 4, as opposed to the standard Google Analytics that existed for over a decade. So we're still trying to figure out how to use that tool to track conversions because not every company has the funds to, you know, build their own tracking tools or use maybe their cloud to, to track or, you know, so, uh, apps like Tableau. Um, we like to use Looker Studio and um, BI and a couple of other tools out there that help us pull in the data, but it is going to be harder. I mean, think about it. It's already been hard to, to um, create, uh, tie in your KPIs to to those metrics right and and show attribution that's like we all know that the, the the hard truth is that we don't always know attribution down to 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 the 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 finite level we don't and it takes a lot of work like in in, in our case we use zapier and a couple of other uh integrations between apis to kind of pull everything together but it's not always perfect and it's sometimes uh requires that you do quite a bit of manual work. And that's the thing, you know, that I think for small business owners, solopreneurs um, that don't have teams in place, they, they don't always understand that in order for you to track all the way from like that first click, first impression, you know, maybe months later, now the business, uh, your prospective customer, whether it's on the B2C or B2B side, they, they have interacted with your brand across different channels 20, 30 times, and then now they're ready to do business with you. Sometimes it's really hard to track that footprint, right? All the way from like, you know, first impression all the way to a purchase. Uh, it's sometimes easier to do when you have a an e-commerce um, um, website like Shopify. Uh, you could do a little bit better there, but even then it's hard to track those social media uh, footprints and uh, and get there and it's going to be harder and that's the point that you know with third party cookies going away it is going to be harder now there are some alt alternatives some of which um we're not sure of yet but we are looking at technologies like storage access api and google's privacy sandbox project again i don't have much to say about those yet other than to say we are registered on the uh, developer side and on the google cloud side to really understand what they're offering and what new methods for data collection and user tracking um, we could maybe use, right? Still keeping privacy in mind, right? And uh, also for some of you, if you're not using it yet on your website, the plugins that can prompt the user on your website, right? To either enable, just so accept the cookies. I don't like the accept cookies or not because it, that box, that light box that pops up won't go away unless you accept it. And that's a, a really makes it a bad user experience. I don't like that. I like more the plugins that you allow the user to choose. Do I give you just a minimum data so that you have the best experience on this website? Or do I choose to give you more data so that you can collect and then improve upon my user experience, right? In our case, we choose to just put that in, basically into the uh terms of use of the website. And we've gone through it with our general counsel. So it's something that I definitely recommend 
for those of you out there that are just saying, oh, you know what, I'm just going to copy terms of use privacy policy from somewhere else, put it on my website and then change the name or use a, a free template. I don't recommend doing that. I really recommend that if you're collecting consumer information, especially selling, transacting on your website, take the time, talk to a general, you know, an, an attorney who specializes in, in internet uh, and privacy policies and uh and create something that uh is gonna is gonna be more of a proactive approach so that you don't get in trouble down the road right so but look for preparing for the transition it it's as I, as they said it, it's going to be phased out by q3 but my feeling is that probably google unless unless the government requires them to do so they probably will push it a little bit further again right we'll we'll see but it's crucial, it's crucial to audit and um, audit your current third-party cookie usage to begin with, which you can do by looking at your hosting and cloud. And then test the functionalities, like I said, you know, for, for areas where maybe you are vulnerable. And then start exploring the new features and APIs available for cookie-less environment. Uh, now, whether you're using, you know, GoDaddy, Flywheel, Google Cloud, Azure, like, you know, uh, we use SiteGround for some of our sites. Whatever host or cloud you're using, it's likely that they've already written a lot about this cookie-less future. There's so many articles on AdAge to search engine journals, search engine table. Uh, everyone's been talking about it for years. It's just that now 2024, it's here. So you really need to understand that. So look, the phasing out of third-party cookies isn't just a technical shift. It's a paradigm shift in digital marketing and web development. And as we adapt to these changes, we have the opportunity to foster a more privacy conscious web environment while still engaging effectively with our audiences. Again, give them the tools to be able to customize that experience, right? So look, stay tuned for more as we navigate uh, this cookie list future together. We're going to share more as we learn more. And I appreciate you joining us today for the Lead Gen HQ podcast. I hope that you found it valuable. If you do, please subscribe, give us a rating, uh, email us if you have questions or suggestions for the next show. Perhaps if you are interested in being uh, uh, on the podcast, being interviewed, we are always open to ideas. Until next time, keep innovating and adapting to the ever-evolving digital landscape.